crazy actually when I look at everybody in the age range that's happening here. Um, I was about 21 years old when I look back at when I was in college and me and my buddy, he's my best friend, we do these events just to kind of get some money, do some DJing gigs, and it's just the things we like to do. And one of the distinct memories that I have shortly after graduating is we were both really nervous. We had just started in business and we walked into this really strange pizzeria. And we had driven about an hour and a half to get there. And when we got there, we saw a man that was sitting that we were expecting to meet. And this man had actually driven four hours to get to this location. A man liked pizza, so we decided to leave that place. And then we had this conversation with him, and what happened in that conversation, by the end of it, the man said, I'm ready to give you guys $500,000. And we didn't take it. By the end of the time we left that place, the reason we didn't take it is because I told him, no, actually, we'd like to actually have 800000 And we took it. And I was shaking leaving that place. I was like, oh my God, like, I've never seen more than 10000 I don't even think I ever hit 1000 in my bank account. Here I was, leaving this meeting in a pizzeria with someone who's just committed 800000 For me, that was mind-blowing. And so I was wondering what the hell had happened. And second thing is... That was a couple years ago. I was living in Thailand, and I found myself going beach to beach, working four hours a week, and being financially free. And I was 23 years old. Again, I'm wondering, how, the, how was I able to manifest this? Now, I had a series of these things happening to me. I ended up moving to Malaysia and started working for Mind Valley. On the second day, I went to dinner with this woman, and a week later, she's my girlfriend. I'm still with her today. I'm like, wow, okay, this is like magic. What is this extraordinary power that I have? Even within Mind Valley, within a few months, I found myself leading one of the departments, and today I'm going to be opening my own academy about sales and marketing. And so I see this as a continuous pattern in my life. I find myself being able to have this power to persuade people into getting pretty much anything that I want. And so my gift to you today, as we do this presentation, is to give you guys this gift. This gift is a mindset shift about what you consider selling to be. And I personally consider selling to be the greatest expression of love. Which is the weirdest statement you've probably ever heard about selling. But what I'm telling you here is something, it's not about sales skills. When you hear people taking presentations about, you know, trying to understand you got to close the deal in a certain way, you got to approach it a certain way, those things are very low level. If you want to make a dramatic change on attracting anything you want in your life, it's an inception in the mind. It's a little seed that's planted that grows. And what I want to plant for you today is understanding this concept. It's a simple concept. And it takes time to grow. It wasn't always this way. Because when I was in college, I remember myself, I was doing a presentation. And while I was doing it, I was actually quite shaky. I had a piece of paper and I was trying to talk. And it was impossible for me, it was the scariest thing on earth. And I remember doing a presentation where 30 seconds in, I was shaking so much that I, I took a breather. I literally just turned around because I didn't know what else to do. And I figured if I turn my back, you can't see my hands, so you can see the shaking. And then I turned around again and I did the presentation and it was horrible. But the teacher said, that was a really good thing you did. You know, you, you took the time to gather yourself and do the presentation, so that's, that's really good. But I looked at the eyes of the people and I felt like, why, why can't I speak this way? Why can't I be able to command an audience and inspire people? It frustrated me. And what happened is I didn't understand this concept of selling. And when I say selling is the greatest expression of love, I'm pretty sure that's not the first thought you thought of when I said selling. This is probably more what came to your mind. The used car salesman. Any kind of concept where someone's taking advantage of you. There's a big, heavy, negative annotation around selling. And it's a terrible thing to have because it truly is one of the best things you can do. And if I'm going to plant this seed for you guys to show you what selling is and being the greatest expression of love, I'll need to give you guys a new definition. Now first, I want to understand, what is your emotion when it comes to selling? Is it fear? Is it guilt? Is it uncomfortable? When you find yourself in a sales scenario, is it something that you find is a necessary evil to get an exchange happening, to get something from someone? It feels like it's an act of taking. 
When I think of selling and every time I get in a sales scenario, I think of chocolate. And the reason is I got very lucky. When I was very young and I was in high school, we had to do these chocolate runs where you go to your neighbor and you actually have to sell them chocolate. So when you sell the chocolate, I'd go to the door and say like, hi, my name's Jason, would you like to buy some chocolate? People would go like, absolutely, that's amazing, here's two dollars, I want the chocolate. And they get really, really excited. So I'm like, huh, selling is a good thing. Then on the seventh house that I went to, when I knocked there and I offered chocolate, a girl came down and I ended up dating that girl for a while. So like, wow, selling is amazing, a girl started dating me because of it. So I have very positive associations when it comes to selling. And the problem that people have when it comes to selling is typically you'll have those negative associations. I'll help you guys get rid of that by the end of the presentation. The other thing is I find myself that selling isn't just in the process of just getting an exchange or a transfer of money. Um, it actually happens in a lot of different scenarios, and more particularly when you're in a relationship. So how many here might have had a chance where they had to bring flowers for their girlfriend? That's actually a sales scenario. That's actually a time where you're actually going to give so that maybe you can receive later in whatever form and currency that is. But this, it still is a sale. So, for the definition, for the purpose of restructuring what the concept of selling is, I'm gonna to present to you two definitions. The first is what I think is a beautiful definition from a business perspective. It comes from this gentleman called Jay Abraham, who's a fantastic salesperson and quite the authority in the field. And he quotes, understand that you need to sell you and your ideas in order to advance your career, gain more respect, increase your success, influence, and income which is correct, but for a slice of what I believe selling truly is. See, selling is a much more vast thing. It's actually every single interaction you have with any certain person on the planet, whether it's a parent, where it's, it's, it's a, a daughter, a son, whether it's a professor that you need to hand in your homework and you're a little late. See, dog ate my homework doesn't work so much, but if you're good at selling, you can hand in late assignments. So any kind of scenario that you'll be in is gonna be selling. And let me present to you the most wide definition and most precise definition that I have and I think you guys will be able to relate with. And I do work for Mind Valley, so it does have a bit to do with the woo-woo. Selling is a facilitation of an energy exchange between conscious beings. When you know you offer more than the total cost paid, selling becomes an act of the greatest love and care. Think about it. If you're making a sale, you exchange money, you exchange a product, you'll exchange time, but even more than that, you exchange emotion. And if you know that what you're going to give this other person is worth more in all the sum of the currencies that you're going to give to this person than what they need to pay for it, you will go to great lengths to make sure this person understands what you're going to give to them. Think about if you were in a scenario where you found this girl and you know that you needed to marry her. What would you go towards the lengths? Because you know you're going to treat her better than any other guy would ever treat her. You will raise her a son and she will have a beautiful family. You will go to great lengths to make sure that she understands that and that you deliver that. Think about any time that you're going to come to it. Like the perfect example that I love to quote here is, imagine you had the cure for cancer. And it's simply a pill that you take and you can cure cancer. And you find someone that has a dying child and you want to cure them, would you write them an email to tell them that you have this product? Would you call them? Would you go knock at their door? Would you be relentless to make sure that you can save a life? If you pursue any kind of thing that you want to do, especially when it comes to career and any kind of sales scenario, with that conviction of what you're giving is more valuable than what they need to pay, you will go to great lengths and you will see things happen magically for you in your life. Let me give you the three loves of selling so that you can start applying this concept in your life. Number one, love yourself. You've heard this before and it's true in every scenario. If you do not have self-love, it's very hard to give love. Just like if you try to make a sale without self-love, you'll probably encounter this type of person as someone who might be apathetic in a sales scenario. Someone who just doesn't care, doesn't give you the energy into the sales process and you feel like this person is letting you down. So understand some people actually have this issue. So if you are finding issues with that, you don't need to buy any products, you don't need to go out there and you, you just need to reflect on yourself. There are so many wonderful things that are happening today, we're the best generation ever. And if you just understand this concept of selling yourself and, and you truly embrace it, you'll be able to be at a position where you can give love to others. The second thing is love your product. If what you're doing 
and what you're selling isn't something you personally believe in, forget it. You need to have love for the product if you're going to offer it to someone else. Now, what if the product is yourself? What if you're an employee at a company? Then again, refer to the first rule because you need to have self-love. Another question is, what if you're facing a scenario where you work for a company and the product is broken? You fix it. That should be your number one priority. If you find yourself, you develop this app and you're selling it and it's a terrible app and you feel discouraged that every sale you make, actually, you're not giving them the value, you fix the product, you put all your energy. See, every time you make a sale, it's a piece of you that you're putting out there. So fix the product or else it's gonna drag you down. If again, that product is yourself, work on yourself, learn and educate, that's why you're here. You're here to learn new ideas so that you can better yourself. So work on fixing the product. But, fair warning, if you simply have the two first loves of selling, where you love yourself and you love the product, you might be a little narcissistic, which is not anywhere better. So, the reason this would happen is you're lacking the third love, which is the most important love if you're going to be in a sales position, which is love your client. I mean genuinely love your, like not in a relationship way, but genuinely care for the well-being of every single person that you interact with. Because every interaction is a sales interaction. If you genuinely care for the best interests of the people that you interact with, you'll find yourself that you will go to great lengths to give the best of everything you have, and abundance will flow into your life. I promise you that. Now this all sounds nice, then why is there so many bad salespeople? There's two main reasons why. The number one is fundamental attribution error. What this explains is the fact that when you get into a sales interaction, you have absolutely no idea what this person has been going through. Maybe that morning, they found out that their house is being repossessed by the bank and they need to make that sale to make payment so their house is not lost. So when you saw that used car salesman push the sale and make the sale of a car that might not have been of true value, you have no idea what kind of background he was at. So you need to always understand that if someone comes to you with a bad sales experience, it has nothing to do with you, but there's probably many things happening with them. So you need to just share love, share empathy, and let it go. The second thing that you can do to be a bad salesperson is the underlying message of the definition I gave you, when you know. See, there's a dark side to being really good at sales, is that when you can manipulate the perceived value, because there's two values in sales. There's the real value, what you're giving, like the total energy, but then there's the perceived value, which is what people think it's worth. And if that's way too high as opposed to what you're giving them, then that's when you start seeing scenarios such as this, where you can actually manipulate a lot of people. And to be honest, I found myself in this scenario in the past. Um, as I discovered myself with this power of sales, I, it's, it's this idea grew on me, I practiced it, I cared deeply about it, and when it clicked that I could sell, it became something that came naturally, I found myself as a telephone salesman. And I was selling $100,000 coaching packages. And I remember being on the phone with this gentleman who's actually gotten out of prison. And this was about buying US real estate, uh, real estate in the United States. And this man couldn't even step a foot there. And he's like, I can't do this program. I can't even go in the US. I'm like, are you kidding? No, 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 no. This program is going to give you guaranteed success. You don't even need to step into the US. You can actually buy everything online. It's a great program. We'll teach you everything, hold you by the hand. It's going to be beautiful. I guarantee you'll be successful. And if not, money back guarantee. And at the end of the conversation, the person bought. And when I hung up, I felt horrible. I'm like, what have I done? What is, like, is this the dark side? So at the end of the day, I went to my boss and I'm like, I don't think this was a good idea. He's like, no, 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 good job. Do a couple more of these and you will, you know, we'll be going. And from my side, you know, I was in a position where I had a certain pride about it, which is not the right energy level again. I had a certain pride, but then after I look back at it, I'm like, this was bad. And I left that company. I went to work uh, for where I work now, Mind Valley, and I most I enjoy absolutely what I do there because the types of products we sell genuinely help people. But see, when the product's broken, you gotta walk away sometimes. If it's not a fixable product, you walk away because when I made that sale, a piece of me left. It was an emotion that was taken, it was this guilt and it actually threw me into a depression shortly after because I found myself making these sales that just didn't feel right. I was like really stepping into the dark side. So as Spider-Man would say, once you learn to be really good at sales, be responsible for your skill. And if you always come from an energy level of love, you will do no harm. So promise me that. 
Now, to end the presentation, I'd love to give you guys three tools to start selling more from love and to stop selling from fear, because a lot of us sell from fear, and it's just because a lot of us, if you think about it, have had an upbringing uh, where parents might have said something like, no, you can't have that. Yeah, no, that's not right. Why are you always asking for money? A lot of people actually have these interactions when they're between three to seven years old, which is when you have some of the biggest imprints into your life. So the first thing you need to do is forgive. Think of every past sales interaction you've ever had, and if ever you're into meditation, which I highly am, always close your eyes, get into a meditative state, and think of all the past interactions. I'm talking about if it was a cell phone you bought and you realized it broke after two days, whether it was a if it was a car that you bought, if it's your parents that you wanted that new toy and you never got it and they told you, stop asking. That stays with you and you find yourself never asking for what you really want. So forgive that and let it go because the more you hold on to these negative thoughts, it prevents you from taking advantage of this amazing skill that actually makes the world a better place. Let go, forgive, because it's a charge against yourself. Second is grow. Now, there are a lot of books out there about sales. There are a lot of books about uh, strategies and interactions. But when you understand that selling is an expression of love, every time you read a book about sales, it's you showing empathy to the people because you want them to truly understand what it is that you're giving to them. See, when I was running on an online event and I was selling products to thousands of people online, I understand that if I did this one little tweak to increase the conversion of the number of people that, oh, that's one more life that I get to impact, one more life I get to change. And every time I do any kind of product sales now, I talk to clients who have bought the product in the past and they tell me how much it's changed your life. When you're empowered by understanding that, you will go to great lengths to learn any language, the language of empathy, the language of love when it comes to sales. So read the sales books and always see if you can learn more. Now, <laughs> interestingly enough, one of the best books that I ever read was called The Game. And that book actually teaches you how to pick up women. But there's really two ways you can read that book. See, one way is actually how to take advantage of women and actually do what is personally more desirable. The second way is to understand that if you want to have an interaction and attract someone that you love, there might be a certain pattern or a certain language you need to learn. And I've used the, co the, the concepts of that book to find a girl and to actually be able to go out with her after my second week at Mind Valley. We're still together and I love her to death because I came with that energy level. So grow, learn. Sales concept shows you more empathy for your contacts. And number three is just more love in everything that you do. The world is always a better place if you always start with thinking of love and you're gonna end up doing amazing things. Now, all this is wonderful. Sales is a great skill, but what's the point? Aside from being able to elevate your life to extreme levels, understand that it's about perpetual energy. See, when you make a sale, when it comes from fear, from guilt, it takes something from you. You make the sale and you take energy from the other person. Or you'll bring yourself down if it's something that you're selling that just didn't feel right. And the planet's energy level goes down. But when you sell from love, that person feels love, you feel love, and the world's energy goes up. So we're just trying to make the world a better place. Yep. Is that cool? Yep. Yep. Never be afraid to sell from love. Thank you for your time.